The um, issue I found is this diode here. I've got a feeling this part of the uh, bias in. So I've disconnected it. Uh, it normally uh, would connect on here. So I've disconnected it so I can test it. And um, we've got, um, we're going to do one handed. But we've got some probes. And as you can see, if we touch them together, we get um, we get a short, as you would expect when you press them together. So, as I said, I've disconnected the one side of the re of the diode. If I clip on him, he's a short. Let me just swap the leads over and try it again. And there we are. Definitely a short. So I'll have to um, have a look to see what number it is on there and um, get a new one. Hello. So my uh, issue with the um, Explorer amplifier I've got. Um, I've uh, traced it down to the Zener diode. The Zener diode had gone short circuit. This is the maybe two year. This is the original uh, Zener. It's uh, made by Philips. Not that that makes any difference. The Philips uh, nine point one volt uh, Zener diode. Uh, the anodes were getting just slightly red, but neither neither case though it was uh, it was still drawing current. So obviously there was an issue. The amplifier was still putting out the same amount of power as it did, but obviously drawing current on standby. And that was uh, that was shown by the uh, by the uh, plate current meter. So um, as I said tra tracing the faults down to the Zener diode. I now replaced the Zener diode. And the amplifier is uh, is working fine again, like like it should. It's doing um, well over, well over a thousand watts into a uh, dummy load from the uh, two three five hundred ZG valves. Um, it, it does look a bit Heath Robinson. You've got to be honest. For a commercial amp amplifier, the uh, early uh, linear amp UK amps were very sort of uh, built in my shed type look, as you can see built in the shed, or well, that's a sort of, you know, homemade. They do look very homemade. Although after 25 years, it's still working. And I've owned this amplifier for a couple of years now, and the only issue I've had has been this uh, Zenodite had gone short circuit. So I bought a new one off uh, eBay, it cost uh, six pound, including post and packaging and delivered to the door. So for six pound, it's now back up and running. Um, I also had a slight issue with the, where's it too? The one ohm resistor by here, even though it still shows in spec, the insides, um, the ceramic uh, insides had started to come out. So yeah, you can see it there. It's like a powder. The insides have started to come out, so I thought I'll replace that as well. So at the time. At the time, I didn't have any one ohm resistors, so I've had to parallel up some uh, three ohm resistors I got, or three point three ohm resistors, uh, just to um, uh, get the amplifier working. But they're a bit too high. Two of those parallel together, a bit too high. I can't get the case back on. It stands maybe a couple of mil proud at the bottom of the case. So good old eBay again. I bought um, some one ohm resistors. Bought two, only need one, and the other one only uses a spear. So I'll pop that in in a bit, and uh, the amplifier is basically up and running again. But uh, tracing the circuit, I've been looking at um, obviously uh, going off the uh, diode and the symbol for it. There we go, going off the diode and the symbol. 
is that um, uh, that is the anode, that's the cathode. Now on the diagram here, he uses um, four zener diodes in parallel, basically five watt zener diodes to give uh, the 20 watt rating. That then goes through uh, four resistors uh, to the uh, to the heaters that goes to the uh, to the heater and you have a 22k resistor um, which is then shorted out with the relay that's the relay that is a 22 ohm a 22k resistor so that bit corresponds with a diagram sort of um, so there's the resistor there's the relay then runs up to the diode and that part doesn't correspond because the diode uh, isn't uh, isn't to ground the anode doesn't go to ground on the diagram at all so I've got my head scratching and I've, uh, I've emailed Peter um, really wasn't a lot of help <laughs> so uh, yeah there we go just really wasn't a lot of help um, but I, I, I before I uh, owned this uh, Explorer amplifier I used to own a, uh, a Hunter which is basically a similar amplifier but with only the um, the one 3500 valve in it and I've still got the, I've still got the manual for it and looking at the uh, Hunter as we can see the single valve we come down here, and that looks more closer to the diagram and the diagram, uh, the uh, schematic, or the way it's wired up for the Explorer. So, yeah. The um, anode to ground, we don't have the capacitor, but the anode to ground and the um, resistor shorted out by the um, relay on transmit, so on receive, it runs through the uh, resistor, basically doors, no current, but on transmit, the relay, the um, resistor is short-circuited and um, it allows the bias voltage um, to the um, to the heater network. So, anyway, yeah, very strange how it doesn't correspond at all. I know there's a um, an Explorer 1200. Ooh, the meter's beeping. Let me just turn it off. So, um, yeah, I know there's an Explorer 1200. So whether or not the Explorer 1200 is wired the same as the diagram, I don't know. There's not an awful lot of information online about the Explorer amplifiers. Yeah, this this uh, this diagram at all doesn't correspond. That bit does for the uh, ALC and whatever. That uh, that seems to correspond a bit with the um, circuit board that's in here. So as we can see, we've got uh, three, four, and four eight diodes, which are part of the ALC circuit, and we can see the three diodes here. We've also got a, a diode here. And a um, 4.7 microfarad 450 volt capacitor for there, which um, comes off, which comes off uh, the ALC circuitry here. So that bit sort of corresponds. So we've got the one n four zero zero seven a 4.7 microfarad. Um, capacitor, so yeah, that bit does. I've, I've traced this round and up through, and that's uh, that's the same. Obviously, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six um, uh, input tuning uh, to the input uh, what what the radio sees. So it sees fifty ohms. We've got six of those. On the diagram, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's got one sixty. This this amplifier doesn't have one sixty meters. So I guess 
this one does. So uh, I would guess that this isn't for the Explorer 1000 I've got. I think it's probably more for an Explorer 1200 or something, which is basically the same amplifier, but with the uh, extra band and a slightly re re revised um, control board. As that was made by a bloke in a shed, by the seams of it. But still works, and it does very good power. But um, they are very, uh, they are very much uh, shed made by the looks of them. These amplifiers, as you can see, it's uh, it's very shed made, but it, it works extremely well. Anyway, my ongoing uh, little issue now I've got is the change. I'll take out these two resistors and replace it with the one resistor here. Set the um, uh, the meter reading to correspond with the same bias current. And um, we can then pop the uh, covers back on. So I've drawn a uh, diagram of the uh, control board for the uh, Explorer 1000. Crudely drawn, but very simple to follow. Very, very easy to follow. It's basically how the layout is on the board. Um, some of the tracks, uh, especially where this resistor has been changed a couple of times for some reason. Um, some of the tracks are, are lifted and they're not the best. So I might just uh, etch out another board. I might etch out another board at some point. Um, but uh, it's all working, which is the main thing. And the um, amplifier uh, just needs to have the top and bottom cases put back on now. And we are back in business. So the uh, Amplifier is uh, almost back together, just the uh, cases to put on, or the lid, the lid and the bottom panel. So we've got it uh, rigged up here. We're into a, um, a Palstar 1500 watt uh, fan cooled uh, dummy load. The amplifier's on and tuned. We are on uh, 40 meters with 20 watts. On the uh, normal range on here, um, on the 1.5 kilowatt uh, scale. So 20 watts going in and we have, put the amplifier on. And we have four, 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 put it on to uh, peak hold. 20 watts gives, Hello, hello, about 300 watts. Hello, hello. So that's um, the 20 watts in. Let's go up to 50 watts. That gives, hello, hello. So 50 watts gives 900 watts out. 900. Let's go up to 100 watts. 100 watts gives, hello, hello, uh, basically 1500 watts out, hello, hello, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so there we are, uh, basically uh, 1500 watts with 100 watts of drive. Put it back down to the 25 watts. So 25 watts gives me 4, hello, hello, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 25 watts gives just slightly over 400. So 20 watts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4. Take into account losses in the coax and whatever, and 25 watts would give you 400 watts, and of course the uh, the um, tolerance on the meter. Hello, 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 hello. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So there we go. Looks like the uh, amplifier is um, back up and running.